Hi, boys and girls. Well, today we're going to start off with um, well, what I think might be uh, good things that uh, Tesla might want to think about implementing. Okay, and the first one we're going to talk about is actually direction. So, in the beginning, men and women um, walked to wherever they wanted to go. Once they figured out how to stand up straight and walk on two legs, they found out that, hey, you know, it gets tiresome. So they went around and they started looking at the different animals and they found out about this horse. What a great deal. Big and strong. They jumped on his back, grabbed a hold of his mane, and after he got tired of bucking and whatnot, he would go kind of where they wanted. That didn't work out real well. So then we invented the rope. So, so the uh, ancient, ancient men and women take a rope, wrap it around the, uh, the horse's face, basically, tie it in a couple of knots, hold onto it, and now it's giddy-up time, right? And most of the times, the horses would do kind of what they wanted, but there wasn't as much control. So they didn't use the rope. So then, after a time, they invented leather straps, and they put it in the horse's mouth, and that kind of got them to where they wanted to get to. But really, it was kind of awkward. So, the next invention. This is a bridle. This part goes in the horse's mouth. When you tug a little on this, to say the horse go right or left, that horse is going to move in that direction. Okay? And if you have something called a Spanish saddle, that's a little more harsh. And believe me, the horse gets the message right away. And that's, I guess, okay if you want to ride horses. But, but men and, and women, men and women, they, they didn't like uh, the horses. They smelled bad. You had to groom them. They had to be fed. Uh, and then the number one reason for getting rid of a horse, pollution. I'll let you figure that out on your own. Okay, so then... We wind up with this, the steering wheel. So from the very first cars, the first ones that went from a tiller to a steering wheel, we've been using something that looks like this. Sometimes it has controls in it, like you can make your speakers go up and down or change the channels on your, uh, on your radio or something. Maybe it's got an airbag. Almost always it has a horn in the center. But really and truly, is this the future? I hope not. What I'd like to see is a move away from this, which only one person controls, to this, which is kind of the design we came up with for the car that, or the airplane we devised called the, uh, called the uh, Paradigm. And you'll see that the center stick could be flown by either passenger or pilot, and it gave the operators uh, the chance to either sit in either seats or if they had to balance load or something like that. It, it was a kind of a good idea. Unfortunately, um, our partner in the, uh, in the making of that, uh, that product uh, was Lehman Brothers, and they, it didn't work out. In 2008, it just didn't work out. So let's look at the center stick here and uh, ask ourselves the question, do we really and truly need a steering wheel? Couldn't we just have one of these in the center console and use this to guide which way we want to get going? I mean, really, at the end of the day, what is the steering wheel doing for us anymore except a remnant of the past? There's no reason in the world why we have to have a direct connect to the front wheels. Anybody who flies any aircraft, any commercial aircraft, is flying by wire. That means there are no connections to the ailerons, to the flaps, to none of that stuff. It's all done by wire. They have thousands, millions, billions of people flying all over the place all the time in airplanes using something like that. Why aren't we driving like this? Now, if we want to go real crazy, let's have a look at what the next generation might be. When I was when I was um, asked to comment on the first 100 years of flight, I was asked, what do you think it's going to look like 100 years from now? 
So this is what I thought. I thought that we would be collecting uh, electricity, solar power, uh, from clouds that we were going to hang, uh, hang up in the... Uh, uh, how, hang up in, in outer space, and somehow we would bring it to Earth. I didn't know how, but that's, that's what I thought. And I thought that we'd be floating around in, a, in the next hundred years. So when this came out, when I gave this uh, interview, this is the article that came out. This is the SAE magazine. But look at what everybody else had said, oh, in a hundred years from now, are we going to have a car that looks like that? or a car that looks like this, or that, or this, or that. To me, this is all kind of strange. Now, what about steering? How did I have steering in this uh, old-fashioned, or sorry, this, this old article? Well, I wanted mental steering. You thought about where you were going to go, and that's where you went. So, Tesla, you're great at, uh, you're great at coming up with new stuff, innovation, invention, first on the list, get rid of the steering wheel. You don't have to go all the way to, uh, you know, the mental telepathy thing, but I'd really like to see you get rid of the steering wheel in favor of a center stick so that people can move into uh, the next century um, thinking that, you know, maybe we shouldn't be holding on to bridles or steering wheels or tillers. Anyways, that's all we've got for this, uh, this segment, and stay tuned. There's going to be another shortly. So this little segment is going to talk about weight and what we might be able to see Tesla do in the future to figure out how to reduce the weight inside the product. Now, why do I want to do that? Well, weight and range, they go hand in hand. Friction is also one of those things that we really want to try and get rid of. Friction and weight are the enemies of, of long range. So let's look at where we see some heavy things that maybe could be addressed and brought, uh, brought into, into play as far as reducing the amount of weight. So let's look at this tire. These tires, these are the front and rear tires off of the Tesla Model Y. Now, I can lift up a fair amount for an old guy, but when I grab this thing and pick it up, it's not like I want to run... This is the same weight as what I would have for my slicks on a, on a race car. So what can we do to, to try and make it so that it's a little lighter? Well, we had a friend, and you can see I can pick this one up. We had a friend who shipped us one of his tires, one of his rims and tires, that also fit onto Tesla's vehicles in an after, aftermarket uh, product. Now let's just have a look so I don't drop it. Let's have a look at how much thinner this is than that is. Now, what is that going to do for me? Well, it's got less rolling friction, which is uh, not a bad thing. And it's a whole lot lighter because you saw me pick it up all by myself. This, this is something that will be, there will be a link to, uh, to this, uh, this guy's uh, website. So you can have a look at uh, maybe even doing something like this yourself. So here's something where we can reduce friction and weight and get them both at the same time. Now, you've heard me talk a lot about the mega castings. And this is one of the mega castings right here. If we look, we can see that this is where the wheel goes in the back half of the car. Now, this is for the rear, but what about the front? Why, why, don't we, why doesn't Tesla look at maybe making the shotgun and the rail and whatnot make that all out of a, another mega casting? Okay, granted, you'll have to redesign a few things here and there, but at the end of the day, this is not, un, not, not totally um, uh, out of the realm of possibility. Anybody that can do this can probably do something here. So I'm encouraging Tesla to maybe have a look at what they could do to make a front-end clip, a front-end uh, um, uh, casting, that would take the place of all of these little bits and pieces, all these little things that basically cause you to have poor quality. Now, I'm going to keep on the theme of weight. We can look at the Tesla Model Y and the 3 and see lots and lots of opportunities where things could be thinner, things could be lighter. Another good example is the battery tray as well. We know that someone is, uh, is getting a, um, a German company 
to make a carbon fiber battery tray. That's a, heck, that's a great idea. There's no reason why it has to be made out of steel, aluminum, or anything else. Carbon fiber is an ideal candidate for making a battery tray. There's lots of opportunity. So we're trying to encourage Tesla to have a look at what they can do from a weight reduction program. So let me tell you, we do lots of work um, with the Chinese, the Japanese, and the Koreans. And I can tell you for sure there's one rule that we use always, always. Every engineer, one gram every day. It's a nice rule. It's good, for, it's good for encouraging the engineers to look at everything to get even a gram out because if every engineer reduces the weight of everything one gram every day, uh, you've got yourself a winner and it adds up. So anyway, weight reduction is our second, um, our second little kick at the cat here. Anyways, keep, keep, uh, keep watching and we'll have some more for you in, uh, in a very short period of time. Thanks.